What's up, everybody? It's AJ with eTrailer.com. Today, we're going to be checking out the Thule Helium XT. This is going to be a platform style bike rack. So, we got two bikes loaded up there right now. And the cool thing about this is it's going to hold it by the tires. So, there's not going to be any frame contact whatsoever. So, it's going to be good for mountain bikes with those aggressive frames. See how it comes down here? Or bikes with or carbon fiber right here, like we have on the front. There's not going to be frame contact because that can be kind of delicate and scratch easily and you don't want to dent it or damage your carbon fiber. So it holding both of those by the wheels eliminates any problems with frame contact. Let's check it out. This is an upgraded version of the Helium. What they did is they made it a little beefier so it can hold a little bit heavier bikes. So it's going to have a weight capacity of 45 pounds per bike now. And then it's also going to have a maximum wheelbase of 52 inches. The other thing to think about here is it's going to work with wheel sizes from 26 inches all the way up to 29 inches. So it gives you a few options there. You can use the mountain bike like we have or a road bike, but anything lower than 26 inches wheels, it's not going to work with. The arms are going to come out right and it's not going to tighten down like it should. Let's take a closer look at how it holds the bikes because that's the unique part about this bike rack. So since it holds it by the tires, I'm going to hold the bike here by the seat and I can show you you're going to push in on this button here and it brings the arm down and out of the way. And you can do that on both sides. And that releases the bike. I really like that because it's just on those sides. There's no center mast here to get in the way when you're going to load the bikes or unload them. And when you go to throw it up here, you just set it in place in the tray. It ratchets into place. So pull against the tire here. Do the same thing along the back. Push it into place and it holds there nice and steady. So this is me testing here. If you were a little worried about how it holds that, it actually holds it very well. It only shakes a little bit, but it's not going to go anywhere. Neither of these are. I can shake the whole bike rack. About as much shake as you'll get as you're going on the road and you see they're staying in place. Another cool feature it has is it can actually tilt away with the bikes loaded. So I'm reaching underneath here. You can see the button I got on my hand. You lift up on it a little bit. You lift up on the rack and then push that button and it lowers down. So you can either come down with it like this. It's nice that it doesn't go all the way to the ground. Then you can pop up the back of your vehicle and get something you might have forgotten. Maybe you forgot to throw your helmet in there or you're getting your helmet out. You have to completely unload everything to do that. Now I will say it'll probably depend on your vehicle because today with our back hatch here, I'm gonna open up. It's gonna make contact with our handle. So we're not gonna be able to completely open it, but we still can get access in there. I can reach in and grab anything I forgot pretty easily so it doesn't completely block it. And then the other nice thing is when you lift it back up, it just snaps into place. So I would recommend maybe putting one hand on one of the arms, coming here at the bottom, because this is aluminum, so it is lightweight. You hear it click and clicked into place. Another thing they included is a cable lock. So it just pops out here at the end. It's got a lock core in it included. So I already put that in. You got the key here. You can lock and unlock it. What we're going to do is use this. I suggest going inside the arm here. I'm going to put it through the frame and the wheel. That way, both are secured. And so what you'll do is you'll bring this end back over to our lock, and it's going to go right there in that slot and lock it up. Now it's secure. So it's got one there for the back bike, and it's got one here at this end for this bike too. Now we're gonna drive around the parking lot, see how it handles. We got some bumps here, to simulate speed bumps or anything you might hit when you're going down the road. So taking a look back there, looks like the bike rack is shifting back and forth just a little bit, but the bikes aren't in danger of sliding out of those arms. These are pretty aggressive bumps too, so yeah, it looks like it's handling pretty well. So now we're gonna kind of drive a little out and around. We'll get to the portion of the parking lot where I can speed up a little bit and then we'll do some aggressive turning there see how it handles that. Now it's a little bit rainy today, so I'm not going to go as fast as normally do, but we can just do a couple of aggressive turns. Yeah, the bikes aren't going anywhere. Back in from driving outside, it seemed like it handled pretty well. You know, I was a little cautious of the arms and how they hold the bikes. It's one thing to stand here and kind of shake it back and forth. It's a whole other thing to be actually driving around with it. So I was able to do some laps in the parking lot. And as I told you, while driving, it only moved a little bit. It was seemed like it was more the bike rack moving like this when I hit the ramps or, or the bumps. 
So not a whole lot of a movement. So I think that it's going to be just fine holding up when you're going down the road. I went ahead and removed the bikes. So we're going to show you how to make it condensed. We can bring the arms down. They fold in. Super easy. Just push them down. Maybe you can take a closer look at the trays here while we're here with no bikes loaded. You can see how they're ready to accept a wider tire here, like a mountain bike like we had on there. And then you have this slot here in the middle. It's gonna be for a road bike tire. So that's gonna help out that it fits right there where it's supposed to. And the other one will sit on top of that, giving you those options for those kind of tires. Even at the top of our arms here, you can see there's a little bit of a notch. How about I move this one that's closer to you? Bring this up. There's kind of a notch here. And you can see that's where the road bike tire is going to go too. So it specifically will hold it at that point. And I think that's important because that helps it stay steady. It's not just one big groove that fits all. It's made specifically for that. And then the mountain bike tire fits up in the wider area. We'll push all these down to get in. Not sticking out when the bikes aren't loaded. Now, another thing we can do is actually tilt it up towards the vehicle when it's not in use. So you can pull that handle down here, just like we lowered it. So it's the same way we did that, except we're just gonna push it up. Now it goes up towards the vehicle and takes up far less space. So if you don't have bikes on there and you don't feel like taking this off and storing your garage, you can do this, it'll take up less space. But how much space is it gonna take up? Let me get the measuring tape and we can get some measurements. So we'll go to the center of the hitch pin, the hitch pin hole that is, sorry, and the furthest out point on our bike rack. Looks like it's about right here. It's gonna be about 32 inches it sticks out. So you're gonna be mindful of that when you drive around, especially when you're backing out of tight spots or you know, any place you don't have a lot of space, just remember that this is back there. Now, I showed you we could fold it up, so let's go ahead and do that and see how much space it actually saves in that position. Now that it's folded up, we can go center the hitch pin again, come out here to the knob. Looks like it's right there at 13 inches so that's quite a bit less, but again, still remember it's back there. You don't have any issues when you're backing up. Another one to look at would be how close it is. We'll go from the center of the hitch pin to the closest point here. It's about eight inches. So you got eight inches of space between your bumper and this portion of the bike rack. So that's plenty of space, I would say, because you can easily get back here if you need to in between, and there'd be plenty of room. Even though this hitch comes out a little bit more than some other ones, that's the measurement we got for this part. Now with it folded up, we'll go from the center of the hitch pin hole again the edge right here it looks like about five inches of space so still plenty of space between the hitch and the vehicle with it folded up take a look at the hand knob here at the bottom i really like that there's a no tool install some of the thing that kind of bothers me with these bike racks is by the time you lift up and in there you need a special tool to tighten it down well this one doesn't have that this one is a knob with a lock which all these cores can be matched like to other tool accessories so you're going to use one key for it so that's kind of cool Right now, it's in the lock position. You see the hand knob just spins freely. That means it's locked. Nobody can mess with it. So nobody can come around and loosen this up when you're around your bike. Now, with the key, put it in there, unlock it. You'll see I got it nice and tight. We'll slowly undo this, and it'll get more of a rattle here in the hitch. You see how much more there's movement here, how it even kind of lowered. That's as loose as it can go. Up here we got the stinger, so there's not even a hitch pin, so I really like that part too. That's not an extra accessory. Most of the time you have to screw something in here, tighten that down, that's where you need that tool from. This comes in, just goes right into place once you line that up. And if you come back here to the hand knob, you can see as I tighten it down, it takes a lot of that shake out. So let me get it nice and tight. You can even see the bike rack kind of raise up as I tighten that in the hitch. So I'm gonna get it, it's a little past turn, to get it tight now you can see i'm shaking this whole vehicle back and forth and there's no rattling in the bike rack whatsoever some of the nice things with not having tools in the way so you just got the hand knob and the stinger you're gonna pop that out and slide out really easily and it gets its name from the helium because it's made out of aluminum so it's super lightweight you can easily lift it up it's not a big deal it's going to help you out when you're going to put that in the garage and you have limited space and you're kind of trying to shift back and forth with it you can kind of hold it with one hand and make your way through. I really like that because the platform racks definitely get heavier the more they can hold. I'm gonna bring Evangeline in here to test out the bike rack. Let's see how you like it. That's me. So I, whenever I talk about my bike racks, I always talk about how difficult it is to install all by myself. I can't carry it with one hand like AJ can, but actually being able to carry this is a big deal for me because some of our heavier bike racks, I can't install all by myself. But as you can see here, 
even though our hitch is really high up, just like that, I'm ready to go. No tools, pretty easy. Yeah, I can lift it, that's cool. Now looking at the end where the shank is, you can see that silver part there, that is gonna be an adapter. So if you can take that off and it'll fit on inch and a quarter vehicles as well. Today we're using a two inch by two inch hitch. So something to compare this one to would be probably the Kuat transfer. While not exactly the same platform style, it's got a hook that comes down on the tires. I like the U-shaped design on that one. It's easier to walk right in and hit that pedal to lower it. This one's got a pretty easy handle here at the end. At least they put it here and it's easy to get to. The only thing is when lowering it, you need something to hold on to. So maybe the arms you can hold on to and lower it like I did or bring it back up. The transfer you can kind of grab by the U-shaped design and bring it up or lower it. So that one's a little easier that way. However, that's gonna be a heavier bike rack. Not by much. That one's gonna be 47 pounds when this one's 43 pounds. So this is lighter. So if that's one of the deciding factors, you know, this one works that way better. And then with the Kuat transfer, you also have an anti-rattle hitch pin. So you're gonna need tools to put that in. So that means when you go to lift this up and put in your hitch, you have to run that down with a tool to make sure it's nice and tight. Where this one, no tools are needed. So it's gonna be probably quicker to put this in here or get it out of your hitch when you need to. Overall, I really like the Helium XT. It really made it easy to put it in there. I like the no tool design. The hand knob is great. I got that nice and tight. And the fact that I can lock it, that way it free spins, nobody can mess with it. I don't have to worry about carrying tools around me. I just need those keys on my key ring. Same goes for the cable locks that come with it. You know, it being lightweight was a big seller too. Let me able to lift that up and move around, and navigate in a smaller garage, or just take it out there. It makes it less of a hassle to load it. Even Evangeline came out and tried it out. She was able to lift it up and put it in there with no problems. So that was a good thing for her to have too. It carries the two bikes. Now, I was a little wondering about, I know I've said a few times how the arms actually work with this on this one, but after driving around the parking lot and actually getting my hands on it and tighten it down, it was just fine. The bikes didn't go anywhere. There wasn't a whole lot of movement, so that impressed me too. So overall, I think it's gonna be a good choice for a two bike platform box style bike rack, and especially if you have one of those carbon fiber or mountain bikes that you don't wanna mess up the frame, you just want wheel contact, this would be a good job for that. Well, I think that does it. Thanks for hanging out, and I hope this helped.